Hello, my name is Betty and I welcome you to this online pondering service presented by the Dunville Worship Community where everyone who wishes to have a time of prayer, music, and pondering is welcome. This week we lift up the third Sunday after Epiphany, once again pondering being called to do God's work. Now let us begin by acknowledging our lighted candle within the circle of friends, for we believe that Christ lights our spiritual path and that each of us are connected one to each other by the Spirit. Our first hymn for today is taken from the songbook More Voices, number 163, River Run Deep. to worship is responsive if you wish to participate out loud and your part is printed in red. In the midst of the shadows and despair, the chaos and uncertainty that existed before the world was born, said God, let there be light. In the trials and temptations of everyday life, we seek assurance that we are not alone. God says, let there be light. In the journey to the future, inspired by mentors from the past, remaining open to the guidance of prophets from the future, we live with anticipation. God will say, let there be light. Our opening prayer. Will you pray with me? Loving God, you've called us and we've come. It is good to be together even if 
only virtually. We come bearing the marks and scars of our living and offer them to your healing presence. Bless us as we gather, each one of us, that we may know your spirit moving among us as we share our calling of discipleship. Bless us and bless our time together so that we might be a blessing in your world. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our prayer of renewal. It is intimidating, O oh God, to open our hearts completely to you. We feel vulnerable with no defenses and no explanations. Yet, in trust, in faith, we open ourselves to you praying for the courageous joy to turn back to your way of loving. Let's take a moment to consider these words. God is a forgiving God, and we are a forgiven people. We are told that our light has come. We are challenged to be light in the world, for we are graced by the light of life. Thanks be to God. And our next hymn is Jesus, I Have Promised. Jesus, I have promised to serve you to the end. Remain forever near me, my Savior and my friend. I shall not fear the journey if you are by my side. Wonder from the past. 
our prayer of illumination. Will you pray with me? As we open the pages of scripture this day, loving God, we discover familiar phrases and well-known expressions. Help us as we seek to understand these words and find in them guidance for our life of faith. Comfort and challenge us to greater faithfulness and more dedicated discipleship as we contemplate these long ago, but ever new words. Amen. Our scripture today is Jonah. And although I'm not going to read it all to you, but it is a good, fun read. It's only three chapters, so if you feel like it, please, you can read the whole thing in, a, in one sitting. So Jonah starts off with God telling Jonah that there is a job to be done, an urgent job. He was to go to Nivea and preach to them because they are in a bad way. And God can't ignore them any longer. Jonah, like a lot of us, says no way, no how, and tries to slip away from God on a ship. Yes, he didn't realize that God is everywhere and there is no escaping God, no matter how hard we try. God causes a storm, and the sailors end up tossing Jonah overboard. Along comes a whale and swallows him whole, where he finally relents and says to God, okay, I'll do it. God then directs the whale to toss him up on shore, and off he goes to preach in Nivea. So I'm going to read the chapter 3. Next, God spoke to Jonah a second time. Up on your feet, on your way to the big city of Nivea. Preach to them. They're in a bad way, and I can't ignore it any longer. This time, Jonah started off straight for Nivea, obeying God's orders to the letter. Nivea was a big city, very big. It took three days to walk across it. Jonah entered the city went one way, one day's walk, and preached. He said, in 40 days, Nivea will be smashed. The people of Nivea listened and trusted God. They proclaimed a city-wide fast and dressed in burlap to show their repentance. Everyone did it, rich and poor, famous and obscure, leaders, and followers. God saw what they had done, that they had turned away from their evil lives. He did change his mind about them. What he said he would do to them, he didn't do. Our Holy Scriptures. Thanks be to God. My pondering today, I have named a whale of a story. Let us pray. Creator God, we thank you for your holy word and ask that the words of my lips and the meditation of all of our hearts who hear it, that it may be pleasing to you. In this pondering today, I would like to make two points. The first being our Bible. And the second is when we are tasked to do something for God. When I first got serious about my spiritual journey, I wanted to learn more about the Bible. And I started reading, reading the Bible again for the first time by Marcus Borg. Well, that did not go so well. And the book upset me so much, I had to put it away. The book tells us that the Bible is not literally true. 
and I was brought up that it was. I had the vision of God whispering into the writer's ear what to write down. But that is not true. After taking several courses and reading numerous books, I came to realize that what the Bible is, is the collection of writings of people trying to convey to their readers about God in their lives. And they do it in many different forms. Historical accounts, song, prayers, and fictional stories that teach us a lesson that they have learned. The second point I would like to make today is that today's lesson is a fictional story, unless of course you believe that a whale can actually swallow someone and then several days later spit them out. To show us that God does call or ask us to do things we don't want to do. That we do resist. Doing what is being asked of us and we even try to run away from the calling. But we can never really escape. Yes, you can refuse to heed God's calling. But will we ever be able to find peace and contentment if we do? Ever ponder why so many people are so unhappy? That they always appear to be seeking escape. Maybe through drugs and alcohol, material goods, vacations, gambling, etc., etc. Why don't these things make them happy and content? Could it possibly be that they are not in step with God in their lives? There's an old song that says, I never promised you a rose garden. Being a follower of Christ, we are never told that the journey would be easy, but it's well worth the effort. May it be so. Amen.
I'm so thankful for the life I have. Family, friends, home, more than sufficient food, relatively free from danger of crime, and so many other things to be thankful for, like clean air, water to drink, beautiful view from my window. I am so privileged, and I hope that you also recognize where you have been blessed. That being so, let us now give thanks together. There are many reasons why we give. Heart-filled giving is doing God's will. As we think of the gifts of talent, time, and money that we had given, may our hearts be filled with joy and compassion. Joy for the wonder of giving to God and compassion for anyone who is seeking hope and who may be blessed by our gifts. Gracious God, bless our gifts for all the reasons that they have been given, so that they may be used to build your kingdom on earth. Amen. And our commissioning. Let us go from this worship time rejoicing with thankful hearts for all we have received and share. May we be faithful followers of Christ, willing and eager to love and serve. Amen. Thanks for joining. Hope to see you next time. God bless.